Hey, what's going on guys? So, in this tutorial series, we're going to be going through some basics of Maya, and in specific, we're going to be going through some basic modeling techniques as well as some uh, basic end cloth techniques. And we're going to be using the end cloth specifically to create this sheet we have here. As you can see, it has some nice folds in it, some nice creases, right? And then we're going to be using poly modeling to create our glass. We're not going to be using anything like spline modeling, we're just going to be extruding and just shaping it as we go along. So without further ado, let's get started. So, new scene. Let me just show the grid here. There we go. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is set up our shelf. And our shelf is going to just display our shortcuts just so we can you know, click once here without needing to go into any of the menus and it'll just save us a whole bunch of time. So click this arrow here, new shelf. Let's name this as modeling basics. All right, and here we have our blank shell. Now let's add on some uh, some basic tools we're going to be using in this tutorial, and then we can just add them on as we need them. First thing we're going to need is the delete history command. So go down to edit, delete by type, hold Control and Shift together, and click history. Now this is going to delete any any actions that have happened on a mesh, and it's going to free up some space in the memory and make everything run a bit smoother. Now the other two we're going to need are freeze transformations, so again, hold Control and Shift together, click that, and center pivot, so click that again. Now center pivot does what it says, it just centers the pivot on a, on a mesh, and freeze transforms just zeroes all the transforms out, and just to show you guys what I mean by that, so let's create a sphere, alright, let's go into the channel editor, where all of our translates are, alright, let's move it over, say we scale it, and rotate it. Right, and then we press the freeze transform. As you can see, everything just resets, puts everything to zero, but it keeps the position, the rotation, and everything else. Very, very useful tool. All right, let's lead our sphere. Let's go into the modeling tools and see what we need from there. So let's go to the polygon submenu here. Under edit mesh, right? Extrude. Hold Control and Shift together. Click extrude. We're also going to need insert edge loop, so we'll hit control and shift together. And lastly, let's take um, delete edge vertices right here. So control and shift and click. Now this is a very very important tool. Um, generally, if you want to delete an edge or a row of edges, you don't just want to select them and press delete on your keyboard because the vertices will still remain. And uh, let me just demonstrate that. So we have a sphere right here. I'm going to spin mesh here. And let's, for example, select this row of edges and just press delete. Now, if we go into vertice mode, you can see all the vertices still remain back there. And we have to go one by one and just delete them. But if we go to our edge, select the entire edge loop, and press this command here, as you can tell, it deletes all the vertices. You know, the edge just adapts to everything else, and no problems. Alright, let's delete that. And next step, now let's set up our reference that we're going to be using for our wine glass. Now, you can just look on Google, any image really will do. Um, the one I'm using is right here. And this, this is going to be a rough reference, it's going to be following one of the one of the lines right here just to get a general shape. And uh, let's let's get started. Let's go to create polygon primitives, plane, draw it on there. Go to control A, press it again to get to our channel box. Let's scroll down, click on the input polyplane. Right, and the image that I'm using is 400 pixels by 400 pixels. So I'm just going to match that with the width and height. I'm just going to carry over the zero, so I'm going to say 40 by 40. Just so it's nice and even. And subdivisions, just leave it at 1. And now we're going to apply the texture to to our plane. So let's go into Window, Rendering Editors, Hypershade, and let's create a new Lambert material. And Lambert material just a is just a flat material. There's no no reflection, none of that fancy stuff. So it's just just a flat material. And also, you never want to add a, any sort of effects to the Lambert one material. Generally speaking, since it is the the initial shading material. So anything you create right off the bat will always have a Lambert one added onto it. 
So let's double click Lambert 2 material. Let's go, let's click this checker box here right beside the color. Go to File. All right, now let's go to down here where it says Image Name with the folder. All right, and let's find our picture that we're going to be using for for our wine glass is right here for me. All right. Now let's you can see it added it on right there. Let's select our our plane here. Hold right click and assign material to selection. Now if you press the checkerboard uh, sphere right there, it's going to show up as you can see. Let's also double click the Lambert right here and let's rename it. Just a uh, wine glass reference excellent now if your size for example isn't 400 by 400 like mine is if it's for example you know 700 by 200 whatever you might run into a problem where your image will be a little bit skewed and to fix that just select your plane go to windows uv texture editor right? and what might happen here and this is where you map your textures and your UVs and just to make sure everything looks looks fine here. Now what might happen if your if your sizes are uneven is that it might look something like this. So it'll be a little stretched out, or a little bit moved over. And what you're gonna want to do is just make sure that your UVs right here, which is which is represents your plane, cover the entire grid. All right. So just select the first UV here, hold X, and I'll snap it to the grid, and move it over all the way here. I'll select the other one, hold X, snap it over. Let's make sure that these ones are exactly where they're supposed to be. Excellent. And close out this window. Let's not forget to rename this. So this is going to be our reference photo. So reference one glass. Now also let's make a layer out of it. So whenever we don't need it, we can just uh, hide it. And it won't be won't be present in the in the viewport anymore. So layers, create layer from selected, and let's rename this layer to reference. Okay. Now let's rotate this point glass just so it's upright on the x-axis. So 90 degrees right here. And press W to move it. Move it up a little bit. Now we're just gonna snap it to the grid just to make sure it's around the base here. So, while having this selected in your W command, click on this up arrow, all right, and hold X, and just move it up until it's, and also hold the middle mouse button, and just move it up until it's right at the base of the grid right there. And just to clean up all the transforms, let's press freeze transforms, and there we go, we're all set. And, uh... Let's just check our outliner just in case. Just make sure everything's organized. All right here we go. And this is where all of your mesh names are going to be located. Just and it's very important to keep this very organized just in case you have to come back to it at a later time or someone else has to work on it. Everything's organized and the naming convention is very easy to understand. Alright, so let's let's start making our wine glass. First things first, let's go to the front view where we're going to be doing a lot of our tweaking and make sure that it's you can see the reference photo let's click textured and the smooth mesh here now to get to the smooth shade you can just press 5 and it will just come up here something like this just press 5 and then press the checker box sphere right there now let's turn off the grid just so it's not getting in the way of anything all right so let's create poly on primitives cylinder just right here. It doesn't really matter how big or small you make it, we'll be tweaking it and just scaling it in in a bit anyways. Alright. Now let's rename this to wine glass. There we go. Let's go into our input right here. Height, ra radius doesn't really matter. Subdivision axis, let's make it 10, just so it's a little bit easier to work with. And subdivision caps, let's add on two. Actually, let's add on three. That'll be 
would be enough. Now let's press Q to get to our select. Don't go anywhere else. Select our, our cylinder here, right? And now we're gonna just scale these in. Go hold right click, go to the edge menu, and double click on this edge right here. Now double clicking on the edge will select all of the edges that are aligned in a line like this. Right? Now while we have all these selected, press R to go to the scaling and scale this in a little bit. Also just a little side note, the keys Q, W, E, and R, they're responsible for, for these menus right here. So Q is the select menu, W is the move menu, the E is the rotate, and R is scale. Right, so now let's do the same to this one. Let's double click R to scale and scale it in. Okay, now let's go to our front and make sure that this looks a little bit like the base right here. So press W, let's just align it, scale it in a little bit. There we go. And in terms of thickness, looks just about right. Maybe Maybe a little bit smaller. Just it, just a little bit. Yep, that'll do. Maybe a little bit smaller. Excellent. Now let's select these edges here again. So double click this one, then double click the one on the inside. While holding control, hold right click and go to vertices. And this will select all the vertices that those edges represented. And while holding shift, select this little vertice right here. And what we're going to do now is go to our front menu and press space to make it full screen here. Press W and let's just move this up right to the base here. Looks pretty good. If you need to make adjustments, just uh, scale it in or out a little bit. Maybe I'll actually scale mine in. All right. And now we're going to use our uh, split polygon tool right here. Split selected edge ring tool. I'm sorry. So, and what this will do is just create mesh all the way around the selected, uh, selected object. So if we do this, as you can tell, it'll just create a line all the way around. Now that we have this, let's actually create this a little bit a little bit higher, maybe right here. All right. And press R and let's scale it in just to shape it so it looks a little bit more like the reference photo. Let's do it again. Let's select this one about about halfway in between. Press R to scale it in. Let's move it in like this. There we go. Okay, now let's do the same thing with the edge selection. Let's select all of these edges here. Hold control, hold right click, two faces, two faces. Let's just select all the faces on the stem right here. And let's extrude them out. And we'll start shaping the base of our stem a little bit. Right. Pull it out here, let's scale it in. Move it down a little bit, scale it out a bit. Extrude it one more time. Right into the end of the base. Let's get a little bit more. Now, to get a preview of how this is going to look when it's all smoothed out, you can press number three on your keyboard. It's going to go to smooth mesh preview. Now, as you can see, this edge right here is a little, it's a little too smooth. Now, in general, whenever you have more geometry near an edge, the sharper it's going to be. So let's. Put in a few more lines here and see what happens. All right, so let's use our split selected edge ring tool. Let's add a mesh right there. Let's add one closer to the bottom here. Because we don't want it to be too sharp. We don't want it to be too rounded either. And let's press three. As you can see, we have a nice, nice edge going all the way across. All right, let's continue with the stem. So again, let's select all the edges around the loop here. Hold control, two faces, two faces. All right, for space, let's go into our front perspective right here. Press extrude, press W, and extrude it all the way up until the stem starts to merge into the rest of the glass.
just about here. Now let's extrude it again. Press W, move it up a little bit. Press R, here we're gonna scale it out a little bit. Let's extrude it again, right up until the end of the stem, as you can see right here, this is where the hollow part of the glass starts. Right about there. Now let's scale it out up to about there. Excellent. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to oops, let's go to object in case we select background. And uh, just in case you want the background to be unselectable, just so you don't do what I just did there by accident, you can also just click this little window right here, right beside the V, which stands for visible. Right? And you can go into R, where it's going to be visible, but you won't be able to to select it, so you won't be able to, um, you know, just mess up your mess up your selection. So let's go into Edge, select this entire edge ring, press R, and let's scale it out a little bit. And we're going to be extruding these edges right here just to make the hollow part of the glass, just so so we want it to be a little bit thinner. I think this will do. Now there's two ways we can select these edges here. We can either select them, go into hold, right click, go into face, and select them face by face. Or we could just select all of these edges and convert them into faces. So let's do that. Go into select, select edge ring tool, and let's actually add it to our shelf. So holding shift and control together, click. Let's click this tool and let's double click on these edges, and as you can tell, select all of them around. While holding control, go to faces, faces. And now we're going to start extruding the hollow part of the glass. And also, generally speaking, you don't want to have these triangles here, but uh, you're not going to really gonna see that mesh. And seeing as how this is going to be a still shot, it's not going to be too big of an issue in our case. But generally, you definitely don't want to have any triangles in your mesh or in your scene unless unless there are some special circumstances. Alright, now let's go to to the front perspective and let's start extruding. Extrude here, press W, move up a little bit, scale it out, extrude up, scale it out again, more, extrude or sorry, yeah, extrude, up, scale it out here, and we're just going to be scaling it in just to make that nice shape that we see here, extrude out this, R, scale it in, and let's do the last one, and scale it in. That's just a little side note for what I'm doing when I'm extruding is when I'm pressing extrude, this thing comes up here and this is to extrude on the normals. So whichever way the the polygon is facing is that's the way that is gonna extrude. Now what I like to do here is just unless I actually need to extrude it on the normals, I'll press W just to get to the global move, and then I'll extrude it from there. Now let's go to smooth mesh preview and see how it looks. It doesn't look too bad. I need to actually scale it out a little bit here. So let's grab the vertex. Let's grab all of these here. All right, press R. And let's just extrude it just a little bit, or scale it out just a little bit. Here we go. That looks really good. Let's see how it looks in our perspective. Let's just press V to get that to uh, disappear for a bit. Here we go. Alright, so that doesn't look too bad. Excellent. Go to the side. Beautiful. Actually, what I did here is I double extruded. There we go. Just gonna go back here. There we go. Now, what happened there is just I did another extrude on the edge, right on top of it. So that's why it looked very, very sharp. Now let me just fix this up again. I'll select all of this, scale it out a little bit, 
There we go. So now we're going to do, as you can see, this edge right here is paper thin. We're just going to want to add a little bit of thickness to it and then maybe, maybe even round it off a little bit. So let's go to our split, split ring tool. Let's add an edge right here and another edge on the inside right here. If we press 3, see it is pretty sharp. Not too bad. And let's actually create an edge on the inside right in here. And while we still have this selected, let's press W and move it up a little bit. Just to create that nice rounded look right here. So it does have a little bit of thickness, but it still looks very thin. There we go. Okay, so it doesn't look too bad. Now let's let's model the uh, the table that our wine glass is going to be sitting on. Now we're not going to spend too much time on this, as you're generally not going to see it because the cloth is going to be on it. It's going to be pretty much covering the entire thing. So let's select our wine glass. Go into layers create layer from selected. Well, let's just call this wine glass layer and save. And let's turn off the visibility on this one. And just like we started with the wine glass, go create polygon primitives, cylinder. Here we go, like that. All right, maybe we'll even get a little bit smaller. We'll start off from the bottom and then go to the top. Holding the X button, let's just snap it right to the middle. Right there. Excellent. Let's rename this to table. And let's also add two caps on it and ten subdivisions. That's all we'll need for now. Let's select, right, hold right click, go to the edge, select all these edges, press R to scale it in, scale it in, Q, right click, face, and select all of these faces here. Now just in case you select any of the faces on the other side, you can just hold control, like for example if I select these three faces, just hold control and just select these one by one, and it'll unselect them from this, this group right here. All right, now while I have it selected, press extrude, all right, press W to get to the global move, go up like this, excellent. And from here what we're going to do is extrude one more time, it's going to be just a small extrude right here, all right, and this is going to be the, the main table right there. Right, let's unselect that, go to our select edge ring, select this ring of edges right there, holding control, right click, two faces, two faces, and let's extrude these out. Press extrude. And here let's let's use the uh, the normal command. And this will make sure that every single polygon extrudes on its normals. So wherever it's facing. There we go. And this will be our table. Oops. What I'm gonna do actually is bring this in a little bit, so select edge ring. Double click on this, holding control, two faces, two faces. And let's scale this out a little bit. There we go. Now, doesn't look too bad, but let's let's actually make the edge on the table a little bit sharper. So with our edge ring tool, let's cut here and here, add a little bit more geometry. looks good. We're not really going to see underneath there, but just for aesthetics, let's, let's add edge here, edge here. Same with this. Let's also make this edge a little bit sharper, just in case we do end up seeing it. There we go. Excellent. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do is make sure our table is sitting right on the grid. It's going to help just with our setting up our end cloth nucleus, which I'm going to explain later on. All right. So while holding D, 
which is responsible for the pivot and now we can move the pivot without actually moving the model itself so while holding D and V at the same time and V snaps two vertices middle mouse click right in the middle right in the middle vertice right here All right and now that we're there hold the X key and snap to the grid and make sure it's snapped right to the middle excellent okay now that we have our table set up let's see where our wine glass is it's a little it's a little too big so let's just scale it in a little bit while having scale scale tool let's scale it in press W move it up turn the wireframe which is right beside the smooth shade all you let's scale it in a little bit more okay let's make sure our pivot is right on the base here so while holding D and while holding V at the same time let's just click middle mouse click right in the middle there and from there let's just middle mouse click while holding V right in the middle there just so our wine glass is situated right there excellent so now this concludes the modeling portion of this so in the next tutorial we're going to go over end cloth and how to set it up and how to properly cache it which is you know saving all the positions just so mine doesn't have to calculate it over and over again every time you wanna you wanna see the updated result so anyways um, tune into part two and if you guys like this video press the like and subscribe button on the bottom and yeah cheers